the saddest people are the proudest people. And the happiest people are those who know how to be humble. I read long ago that a Syrian monk once said that humility exudes a kind of odor that even wild animals are able to distinguish, that even wild animals are tamed by people who are truly humble. I tend to believe that, as you know the story of St. Francis of Assisi and the wolf, as you know the story of St. Francis talking to the birds, talking to the animals, and seemingly exuding that odor of humility. The odor of humility seems to be the odor of paradise. Paradise has a sweet scent. It is the scent of innocence. Before the fall of our first parents, which we now call original sin, paradise was fragrant. There was a sweet scent in paradise that was lost because of sin. If the original sin is pride, then the antidote to the original sin of our first parents can only be humility. And on the cross, the Lord taught us humility. He emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. So what is the odor of humility? As I said, some say it is the restoration of the sweet scent of paradise. But humility comes from humus. And humus is dust. Humus is earth. Humus is the ground. So when we speak about humility, we speak about everything being dust. Everything seems worthless. Everything seems powerless. Powerless and small, negligible like dust. That is also the scent of humility. The scent of humility is the scent of the earth. To be down to earth and to recognize that my odor is dust. And if there is any fragrance I have, it is because Jesus died for me. If there is any fragrance I have, if there is any beauty I have, it is because Jesus died on the cross for me. That is what humility does. It restores to us our awareness that we are dust, the smell of the earth. But it also brings us to the sweet scent of paradise, the scent before sin, the scent of purity, of holiness, of innocence. Pope Emeritus Benedict once told the story of Abbot Apollos who had a dream, and in the dream, the devil appeared to him. The devil looked so ordinary, like any of the monks in the monastery, except one basic difference. The devil had no knees. So, from the upper leg to what we have the lower leg, was only one piece of bone. He only could bend from the hip and he could bend from the ankle. He had no knees. The devil has no knees and the devil will not kneel. That is why he's devil, because he will not know how to be humble. God has given us knees and when we use our knees often, in humility, the scent of paradise is restored. The scent of humus becomes real for us. And the end result of that, when the scent of paradise is restored, is consolation, is joy. The saddest people are those who are proud. 
The happiest people are those who are humble. My people, I want you to be consoled, but learn the art of being humble. Know that you are dust, but know that you are loved, and you have a sweet scent, the scent no longer of innocence, but the scent of restored beauty. There's a scent of forgiveness. Let us learn the art of humility. Let humility be our sure source of consolation.